and welcome to another video uh, which will be the second time that I will just uh, sit and talk about uh, something like the uh, e economic situation here in Georgia. Uh, I, I did this already, it was half a year ago and I was talking about the general situation uh, you know, what, what happened in Georgia because uh, of uh, the war uh, when all the Russians came and there was another wave uh, which happened in October and uh, yes, I, I was talking about uh, of course like the rent situation but uh, so th th that one got even worse <laughs> so just in October there was another like 100% increase in the rents so yeah, it's completely insane here. Uh, but so this time I want to talk about why Georgia is booming. Uh, the economy basically is kind of booming. And I try to explain it in the euro dollar framework, which I think is the, the most accurate uh, model to understand the true nature of the uh, global monetary system and you know it's based on uh, Jeffrey Snyder <laughs> maybe anyone uh, knows about him he's this guy who you know he, he's the guy who always has like this other perspective that he's basically thinking uh, around a few edges you have to think around a few edges so uh, yes but don't don't worry if you don't get like in depth uh, why it, it sounds a bit different than uh, how you would normally explain it just based on the mainstream understanding of how the global monetary system works so the, the mainstream narrative would be um, that yes it's the central banks which are uh, in control kind of um, and they, they would control uh, how how you know things are developing that now oh <laughs> we are going into a recession so they're increasing the interest rate and this would actually uh, and the, the inflation before that uh, was caused by this uh, money expansion and yes yeah, so that, that's the official narrative and <laughs> if you but if you and if you get into uh, the the true global monetary system how it works it's the the euro dollar system then you would understand that it's completely different like it's basically kind of the opposite of um, if you try to explain what's happening uh, with this system it's basically the opposite so um, so basically the euro dollar system is a ledger money system because there's no like one uh, central bank or so that's creating euro dollars globally and euro dollars are just uh, dollars because still the dollar is the world reserve currency but funnily uh, the real reserve currency globally is this euro dollars and what what are they uh, they're simply like they're dollars on a on the ledger of uh, commercial banks all around the world um and this is because, um, yes, the dollar is the reserve currency and this is why uh, global business uh, is being done in, in dollars. And, uh, but those dollars, they, they are created uh, by these uh, commercial banks. Uh, so, yes, and this is the, this is the vast majority of dollars uh, which exist globally. And... It, it's hard to quantify them. You can't really de define it as money um, in the M2, M2, uh, M1, M2 terms. Uh, but this is what people are looking at. Uh, and they see that M2 it exploded and they see that just in the last two, three years... Uh, there was a huge increase in uh, M2. But this is not relevant uh, on, on a global level. And this does not explain 
the crazy inflation in uh, consumer prices, especially now. There, you know, which was the first time that we saw something like this, and it did, didn't happen in 2008, although there was um, a lot of quantitative easing, but also this, this, uh, this, it didn't really do anything. So, how he explains it, uh, what's really happening is, uh, and it starts in 2008, uh, with the financial crisis. And he basically says, since then, we are in, in this uh, recessionary environment uh, where, you have, um, where you have a shortage of liquidity, which means there's not enough euro dollars created all around the world. And why are they not creating enough dollars for the liquidity? Um, it's because, uh, because of uh, like natural constraints of uh, the system. And so, of course, uh, like there's not enough credit created if there's not uh, enough uh, uh, possibility to. Uh, issue new credit uh, so there's slowdown in this credit creation uh, which is I, I don't know exactly about uh, the real factors but he was mentioning like it's because of volatility and uncertainty which uh, prevents uh, yeah, new credit creation and this creates the shortage and well actually this makes most sense in the last uh, two years because there's so much uncertainty and volatility and uh, this is why there's a shortage in uh, new credit creation and so the thing is uh, what has happened during the pandemic it's uh, well <laughs> it was a deliberate basically destruction of the supply chains and so this still uh, cause uh, massive uh, delays and m maybe not even shortage but still there's lower supply uh, but at the same time the demand it went up uh, once there was like uh, some sort of normality so the demand was much higher and well it was i think if, if we are talking about the demand for like the, the basic goods uh, like food and uh, consumer products then well, of course, then the demand never really went down this much because it's very in inelastic. So this is why the prices exploded. Uh, and this is not because of the uh, inflation uh, of the money supply, which the, the official money supply, which is labeled M2. So people commonly say now that, oh, finally, uh, like, or this time, uh, not like in the 2008 crisis, like all this uh, stimulus and uh, quantitative easing, it uh, it stood within like this uh, commercial. Uh, it, it stood within like the the banking system, and it only went into like uh, assets and this stuff. And of course, there was this asset inflation. It kind of makes sense, but uh, it doesn't. Yes, and and then it. They they say it's uh, yes. So now they say it's because this uh, stimulus would uh, would be causing this inflation in the consumer prices, and maybe it's partially true. Like in the U.S., um, they got the stimulus checks, so of course prices will increase because of this. Uh, if you give it directly to the hands of people, uh, yes. But basically. He says that this um, quantitative easing was not uh, what is causing now, especially uh, since uh, this year, last year, uh, this explosion in the consumer price. And yes, here, here in Georgia, it's uh, completely insane. Uh, because there's no production, I explained it. Like literally, like, all, almost all the food comes from Russia. Uh, yes, and consumer products from uh, yes uh, Russia, Turkey, and or imported from uh, Europe, like supermarket products. And of course, in, in that case, if you add, like you have all this uh, longer supply chains, and this this explains perfectly why 
products here uh, yes got really really expensive like 20 30 percent inflation on average uh, just this year and um, yes <laughs> so this is um, yes basically I already explained a lot of this uh, points so yes so why why don't we hear about uh, this explanation is euro dollar system and how how did it start um well it, it started um because there it, it was basically an innovation because there there was um there was need for more monetary elasticity there was demand for liquidity uh, on a global level and this was already during the times of the or there was still during the times of the uh Yes, yeah, yes, the gold standard starting after World War Two, and um, so there was demand for like uh, more liquidity globally, and uh, so basically the euro dollars uh, they started to be created in like the the offshore system in commercial banks around the world because there was need for it and so they just uh, did it uh, and like it was not uh, anything uh, official that's why it's it it was like happening in the shadow banking system um yes and this and this is why uh yes it's called uh, ledger money it's a uh, it just exists on a ledger. It's just uh, accounting uh, on the balance sheet of uh, these commercial banks. And so the thing is um, that you you can't really call it a, a bad thing. It's just like a, an innovation of the, the market. But the thing is, of course, the market, it's distorted at its root because there's a monetary monopoly. So, of course... Uh, like uh, these commercial banks uh, creating this uh, euro dollars uh, they, they are profiting because uh, they, there's this monopoly and in, in general like uh, I think most uh, commercial banks in the world uh, they are part of a cartel in each country because uh, you can't just create a bank like uh, yes, they're part of a cartel, basically, and um, this is why they have this privilege. And so, <laughs> if you know anything about like monetary theory, uh, you should know that uh, creating money is very, very profitable business. <laughs> if you're so, if you are the source of uh, money creation, basically, uh, this is the best business uh, possible, and um, so there's a huge incentive to do it and of course uh, they did it and at the same time you can say it was justified because there's a demand but so uh, you have to blame like the game itself which is about um, yes having this fiat monetary system uh, as this monetary monopoly at the source um, yes so yes and this was just a symptom and this happened already like starting in the 50s or so and <coughs> This is why it's going on for many decades, uh, and um, but people still are trying to explain it through the mainstream narrative, uh, explaining it through like the official uh, metrics of uh, central banks and their policies and their indicators, but it just doesn't work and it doesn't make so much sense actually it, it kind of it still makes sense uh, if you have no clue about it and most people will just explain it like this but uh, well once you see this other perspective you realize that uh, yes th this makes much more sense um, uh, okay so now more about the specific situation of georgia and why georgia is doing so good right now although there's basically this global recession uh, which is going on already for 15 years uh, because there's like a 
yes, there's shortage of liquidity uh, globally, and this is why the system is broken uh, for 15 years already. Um, and actually, I, I don't know why. Um, I, I don't know why, like, why this problem uh, persists and why it's uh, so bad that there can't be enough liquidity. Why there's a shortage? Uh, Yes, I, I I can't really explain it, but well now as I as I told, it makes more sense because there's so much uncertainty now, and uh, so banks don't want to create uh, this credit um, and want to give to people because of this uncertainty and that stuff in this environment, which makes a lot of sense. Um, yes, so yes about about Georgia, why Georgia is doing so good right now. Uh, on like a, a country level, like Georgia gets a lot of liquidity and Georgia gets a lot of these uh, euro dollars. Um, uh, it's because Georgia is profiting from the, the Russian economy, which uh, and they're profiting from the situation because they're uh, this huge commodity producer and Yes, uh, commodity price went up because of this uh, global shortage, and um, yes, they're they're already going down again significantly, but still, uh, well, Georgia is profiting from from the situation. I think mostly because of the war, because all the Russians came here and they bought their capital and that stuff and so much uh, money, and this is why also the Georgian lorry is so strong. Also, Armenian drum is strong, and a lot of other post-Soviet uh, currencies are strong, and Rus Russian ruble, of course, also it's uh, very strong. Um, and that that's because there is uh, a lot of like uh, liquidity because uh, of uh, yes the revenues from I think uh, commodities mostly, and the yes, Georgia is benefiting directly from this situation of being a neighbor of Russia. So Georgia is Georgian economy is completely dependent on Russia. It's because of geography. Yes, like you can't do anything about it. And um yes, although people are getting poorer and poorer here because of the insane uh uh inflation in like goods that people need the most. Um yes. But so Georgia is profiting from th this current, like th there's enough liquidity um, in this part of the world now, like around Russia, uh, in like the post-Soviet world. Now there seems like, uh, like globally, it's kind of like an island where there's more liquidity now. Th they're getting... Uh, much more liquidity than most most other countries in the world where you see like the uh yes the shortage of uh, uh liquidity and credit really uh, creating bad problems and um yes and this is also why a lot of currencies are uh, collapsing because of the shortage and uh well the the reason why like a lot of currencies are collapsing it's simply because of the um well it's it's a common theme uh of like so m many probably most developing countries they have uh, a lot of debt and they have problems developing the economy and it's this combination of how the system is created with having a central bank which is holding the government debt uh and this debt is uh, collateral, uh, is collateralized by the whole economy and all the savings in the banking system. And that's once uh, you default on the debt, the whole um, system collapses. And usually, the yes, the currency collapses. And that's what's happening in many countries. And uh, uh, yes, yeah, so <laughs> how how will this um, end? And uh, how how will it continue? Uh, actually, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how uh, how how it can be fixed. How it can fix itself? Because like 
actually no one can really fix it because like there's no central entity it's uh yes it's a shadow banking system and that stuff like so i have no idea how how it uh, can be fixed but you have to understand that this is the true reality of uh, where the global monetary system is at and it's not uh, what they try to explain yeah it's a uh, uh, central bank and they will raise the rates and that's stuff and then it will be fine yes yeah, so you have to look uh, at the more i don't know maybe it's not even the subtle indicators but just what's what's happening like <laughs> every country is uh, experiencing this uh, like recession environment and well but now anyway i think it's like an open re recession and it will continue globally for uh, many years like this environment and uh, yes so <laughs> as, as someone who loves the idea of uh, bitcoin and the uh, fixed money system um, of course i have the hope that uh, as bitcoin is getting monetized um, uh, things will get better although this will not solve the liquidity problem um or maybe it will <laughs> uh, but okay not bitcoin itself because it's a fixed money system it will create even more uh, in uh, in elasticity but so mm, how he explained it uh, basically is that uh, still people will uh, invent um, ways to create liquidity because people want to simply do a uh, business like having a money shortage it's uh, it it won't be it won't stop uh, people and this is why they are innovating and they will create uh, uh, new ways to um, yes uh, create ledger money and uh, cre yes create liquidity and so this probably why there will be uh, actually I, I think it's realistic that still there will be like a a lot sort of uh, private tokens, private currencies, uh, or like commercial banks issuing their own currencies. And, but for sure it will be backed by the promise of, uh, you know, that it's uh, backed by Bitcoin. But uh, yes, uh, well, because it will be <laughs> much, much harder to like uh, force people to uh, trust them uh, there will be a much uh, harder uh, constraint uh, well, and hopefully this constraint is not uh, too much and then it will create this liquidity issues but then on the other hand like i'm not uh, <laughs> I, I i don't want to believe so much in like market failure and it will not be fixed by like uh, <laughs> government intervention or so um yeah, so of course they, they will try anyway to uh, still like undermine if there's a Bitcoin standard. And I think still there will be um, uh, derivatives uh, of like uh, Bitcoin and it will not be all uh, pure Bitcoin. And uh, yes, but, but still hopefully um, <laughs> at the end like... Uh, Yes, like have, having a Bitcoin standard or so, um, it will be much better. I, I think I think intuitively it should be much better because uh, why not? Like, I think we are underestimating the uh, the the benefits that come with like uh, having a real free market money. And well, but then uh, he. <laughs> The argument of Jeff, it's also like we tried this for thousands of years and there was quite, there was quite like good like uh, gold standards, uh, but it was always the same problem with uh, liquidity and that's the biggest problem. And well, in general, I think so. Th this makes sense to me that this is the biggest problem of uh, having a fixed money uh, uh, standard and um, yes <laughs> but I'm, I'm just randomly like uh, talking and I'm, I'm anyway I'm just making this video for myself that to see where, where I'm at like I'm just basically talking to myself <laughs> trying to explain it 
But um, okay, yes, maybe. Yes, maybe it was somehow interesting for you. I think it's very confusing. Uh, <laughs> I just recommend you to uh, watch uh, Jeffrey Snyder. And well, before you understand his points, you have to start. If you have no idea about this stuff and you only heard about the mainstream narratives, then you should get into the alternative mainstream narratives, which is uh, basically the Austrian uh, economics, uh, Austrian theory, and also what the uh, Bitcoin, the Bitcoiners are saying. I, I'm mostly I, I'm a Bitcoiner basically. I to me this uh, yes makes the most of sense. Uh, and um, yes, and then yes, you can consider like you you already think like two times around the corner, and then you can <laughs> add uh, Jeffrey Snyder, and then you're at um, yes uh, this type of uh, discussion. And I think this discussion it's uh, it's the most uh, accurate uh, that you can have. So yes, because it includes like three different perspectives, trying to. Yes, look at all the sites and that stuff. Yes. <laughs> okay, that was just a random uh, talking video. And uh, yes, I don't have uh, banknotes at the moment to show. And uh, yes, that's it. Okay, bye. <laughs>